This is KGW News at Noon. Mr. Giuliani's requests were a quid pro quo for arranging a White House visit for President Zelensky. Mr. Giuliani demanded that Ukraine make a public statement announcing the investigations of the 2016 election, DNC server, and Burisma. The U.S. ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, confirms a quid pro quo. He told House impeachment investigators President Trump directed him to work with his personal lawyer and Ukraine to investigate his political rival, Joe Biden. Thank you for joining us on this special edition of KGW News at Noon. I'm Brenda Braxton. Ambassador Sondland's highly anticipated testimony comes on day four of these public hearings. Susan McGinnis reports. In explosive testimony by the most consequential witness thus far in the impeachment inquiry, Gordon Sondland, U.S. Ambassador to the European Union, directly ties President Trump and his personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, to a quid pro quo with Ukraine. Mr. Giuliani's requests were a quid pro quo for arranging a White House visit for President Zelensky. Sondland testifying that Giuliani pushed Ukraine to announce investigations of Joe Biden and the Democrats and a false theory Ukraine interfered in the 2016 election. Mr. Giuliani was expressing the desires of the President of the United States and we knew these investigations were important to the President. Sondland testifies he informed Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Vice President Pence and other top officials but no one took action. Everyone was in the loop. It was no secret. Sondland first told investigators there was no quid pro quo, first, and President Trump personally Secretary told him there wasn't one. President Trump repeating those words today. I want nothing. I want nothing. I want no quid pro quo. Tell Zelensky to do the right thing. Republicans today trying to isolate the president from Giuliani's efforts in Ukraine. Did the president ever tell you personally about any preconditions for anything? No. Still, Democrats looking beyond the president's words to his actions in Ukraine, with Ambassador Sondland providing what may be the most direct and most damaging evidence in this impeachment inquiry. House Republicans are again calling for Joe Biden's son Hunter as well as the whistleblower to testify. Democrats say that won't happen. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, NBC News. Two witnesses will testify in the afternoon session. They're Under Secretary of State David Hale and Defense Department official Laura Cooper. Fiona Hill is set to testify tomorrow. She's the National Security Council's former senior director for Europe and Russia. NBC News will have special coverage of that testimony and we will carry it live starting at 6 a.m. Well, in just about six hours, 10 Democratic presidential candidates will begin their fifth debate in Atlanta. Here's a look at everyone who's going to be on stage. To participate tonight, they all had to hit higher benchmarks in terms of fundraising and polling. Speaking of which, the latest poll in Iowa has Pete Buttigieg leading the pack. The mayor of South Bend, Indiana, has pulled ahead of Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren and former Vice President Joe Biden. The debate airs on MSNBC at 6 p.m. Boeing says it'll revamp parts for thousands of 737 next generation jets. This comes after a woman died on a Southwest Airlines flight last year. Officials say a, flan, a fan blade broke off one of the engines, shattered a window, and partially sucked the woman out. The NTSB investigated and yesterday recommended changing the plane's design. Just so there's no confusion, these recommendations do not refer to Boeing 737 MAX jets. Those have been grounded since March, following deadly crashes in Ethiopia and Indonesia. And now to Northern California, where extremely dry conditions continue to force that state's largest utility to shut off power. According to the LA Times, almost half a million people are without electricity this noon. Pacific Gas and Electric planned the outage as a precaution as dry, windy weather rolls into the region. PG&E has been doing blackouts for months now, and many people say they're fed up. I get why they're going to do it, but if the wind's not blowing in a, a greater community, 
you know, it's, it's, it's really hard to swallow several days with no power and no wind. PG&E's equipment has been blamed for causing several deadly wildfires in recent years. No word on how long these latest outages could last. Well, back here in the Pacific Northwest, a break in the rain today. That's a live look from our Wells Fargo Skycam. Look at all the blue skies. Beautiful. So, Rod, you're tracking a few days of this kind of weather. Yes, I, I don't like to up you, or do I? <laughs> I'm going to show you the view from the Pacific City camera. Prettier than downtown Portland? Oh, come on. It's spectacular. Temperatures at the beach are going to be well up into the 50s the next couple of days, maybe even getting close to 60 degrees tomorrow in some spots. Really great weather. Also clear out in the Columbia River Gorge. This is Cathedral Ridge Winery out in Hood River. I do want to point out we're watching the gorge wind slowly coming to life right now, not in Hood River, but at Crown Point nearby. Winds are gusting from the east up to about 30 miles per hour. So those of you who live in Troutdale and Gresham and Prune Hill out in the Camas and Washougal area, you eventually will see the winds pick up gradually in the coming hours. Riverfront camera from downtown Portland or Rose City uh, view, 55 degrees, 55, crazy. Well, I, th I don't think we're going to go up much more. We're going to be hanging out right in that mid 50, 57 at most this afternoon, 52 at 4 o'clock as we start to cool back down, then 45 at 8 o'clock. The seven day forecast takes us into the beginning of the Thanksgiving week, and we'll have that. It looks pretty wet, actually. That's coming up. Okay, see you then. Thank you, Rod. Vancouver police are asking for help to find this woman. Her name is Jessica Santiago, and they say she's endangered. She was last seen near East Mill Plain and Grand Boulevard in Vancouver. Santiago uses a wheelchair and she needs to take medication every day. If you have any idea where she is, you're asked to call 911. Okay, this is an unusual crime. Two men are facing charges for illegally taking Douglas fir boughs from the Willamette National Forest. Deputies stopped these guys on Highway 22 near Staten yesterday. Officials say they were hauling about 3,800 pounds of stuff to create holiday decorations. Deputies do want to remind the public it is illegal to cut and take trees or branches or firewood from U.S. Forest Service land. Well, speaking of the holidays, if you are shopping for a kid, you'll want to hear this. This year's list of the most dangerous toys is out. Here's some of what's on it. Ice cream scented Nickelodeon slime, a Nerf dart gun, and the one that advocates are really concerned about, a toy machine gun that looks real. Amazingly, uh, we're still finding products like this. Now, I want to be very clear what I'm holding I know what it looks like, and it looks like a gun. It does not look like a toy. Uh, it is sold as a toy to children. An organization called World Against Toys Causing Harm compiled the list, but a group representing the big toy makers is dismissing that list as misleading. It says those toys are not tested for safety. Well, the newest trailblazer suited up last night against New Orleans. Carmelo Anthony scored 10 points in 24 minutes as the Pelicans beat Portland 115 to 104. Melo started the game and got the first bucket for the Blazers, but after that, he only made three more shots the rest of the night. He also had five fouls and five turnovers. Here he is after the game. Just being out there with the guys again, I think more so of the routine, you know, team buzz team lunch, being around the guys, locker room, you know, just the, the routine that I've been used to for, you know, 17 years now, so getting back into that. But as far as the game goes, it felt good to be back out there. The Blazers played without Damian Lillard. He was out with back spasms. Rookie Nasir Little was the bright spot with 12 points and 11 rebounds. The Blazers are now 5-10. and 10. They're in Milwaukee tomorrow night to face the Bucks. New this noon, a fifth grader in the Beaverton School District has been named this year's Kid Governor of Oregon. She's 10-year-old Raga Mandala. She goes to Jacob Wismer Elementary School. Now, the idea behind the Kid Governor program is to help students get involved in civics. Raga was chosen from almost 2,400 students who applied. Each kid had to submit a video, talk about a community issue that's important to them, and then come up with a plan to work on that issue. For Raga, she is passionate about finding permanent homes for the homeless. 
I don't think it's fair that people have to live on the streets through all the harsh um, weather and I wanted to help them and get them into permanent housing so I decided I wanted to start doing this. Raga says even before earning the title of Kid Governor, she has been busy working in the community and she says she's already helped raise $2,000 for local homeless shelters. By the way, the Kid Governor program is in its third year. Congratulations to her.